Hey folks, Mark from Nomad Boat Building. Welcome back to the workshop. So a few days ago, I got an email from one of my Patreon supporters uh, showing me some photos of a model boat that he had built using my forest and stream model boat plans. Now those plans are available on my website for five bucks, but if you're a Patreon supporter, I send you a paper copy if you subscribe at five bucks and up. And if you're below that, you can get access to a digital copy on the Patreon platform. So what I love about this boat is it's his first time building. What I particularly am happy about is that he got through that model and then he's started building another one and he's chosen a much more challenging design because it's the boat that he wants to build full size and he's wisely trying it in model form first. Now, he was pondering how to cut the stem rabbit in at the model scale. So that is a bit challenging because everything's so small. He's working at, I think it's a um, quarter inch to the foot or something like that. But I thought we would just do a little bit of a video on how I would approach doing that at the model size. And uh, in fact, I approach it the same way I would build the full size one. So we'll have a look at that. And we're also gonna look at some of the models I built in order to develop those forest and stream model boat plans. So I went through a whole bunch of different little iterations of the model making process. And you can see videos of me going through the process of building those models on my YouTube channel. All right, let's check it out. So very recently I got an email from one of my Patreon supporters with some photos of a model he built of my forest and stream skiff. So this is just um, a little project I've been working on for a bunch of years. And it started out with this, it, this drawing here I found I don't remember where I found it, but it's, um, you know, it's from the 1890s. It's just a simple flat bottom or flat iron skiff. And I, I sort of really liked it and I thought I would, it would make a great little model boat. So I started developing up the set of plans for it. And if you join my Patreon group, you get at the $5 and up level, you get a, a set of these paper plans mailed out to you. And, and below that, you still have access to a digital for, version on the, on the website. Um, so these were only ever intended to be built at, as a model. I, the, the original obviously was a real boat, but uh, my version is just intended for bu model building. Of course, you could build a full-size one if you wanted to, but you wouldn't want to use my exact uh, drawings here, or at least the, the, the construction details are for a model only. Um, I thought I'd just quickly walk you through the process I used for developing these plants, and it had to do, it was a model making exercise, really. It started out, with this model here, and all I did was took the uh, original drawing and I cut out the, the profile and the, uh, the body plan and all that sort of stuff, and I just knocked together this quick model, and there's a video of me going through that process, and it's to demonstrate the fact that you, uh, if you just take this profile drawing and you turn it into a boat, it turns into a different shaped boat than the drawing suggests, and that's because you have uh, the, the planks wrapping around a, a three-dimensional form and there's flare and things like that that all change the shape of the boat from that drawing to the physical thing. And the whole essence of boat building is taking a two-dimensional drawing and going through the process of reinterpreting that into three dimensions. And there's a process for doing that that allows us to make the thing that looks like this look like that in three dimensions without just straight copying off the drawing exactly. Anyhow, uh, so that was the first model I did from it. From that, I then decided to just do a solid wooden model. That's a separate video that I've done for that. And this is just using essentially this information here to develop this shape right there. So that's a great little uh, method for just getting a good feel for what a boat really looks like in three dimensions, quick and dirty. From this model, I developed plank expansions that allow you to actually achieve the true shape of the boat. Those plank expansions turned into this model here, and that worked out pretty good. That got me going on making this set of plans. You know, that's just simple cereal box kind of cardboard. I then tried doing one in, in wood, and what I found when I st started doing it in wood was um, if I just used the bottom panel and the side panels and a single frame in the middle and you bend those things together you get this flat iron skiff and what I don't like about this is the fact that it flattens out quite a bit in these forward areas. It doesn't really give you the, the true shape and that's because there's only one form controlling the shape. That's when I decided to do this boat 
well, I needed to have uh, frames, full frames running all the way through it. Started putting together that model and that gave me a much more accurate idea as to what this boat should really look like. You can see how there's quite a difference in the shape between these two. Anyhow, um, somebody had re pointed out to me that my plans were actually wrong for quite a while. And so I went back and re redrew them. I just, it was just me being sort of uh, kind of dumb, but um, I've recently revised the plans a little bit. And um, so this is sort of kind of how you're intended to build this boat is, is on a very simple strong back and set up your, your frames. And of course, this is just a cardboard version as opposed to a wooden version, but you just set your frames up on the strong back and um, start piecing it all together. And this is of course in, in a form that's fully un, untrimmed. I basically use some spray adhesive to just glue the actual plans right down onto some cereal box cardboard to cut these out. And that works pretty good. So the same person that sent me those drawings uh, also started building another boat. He started building a Manticus Peapod model, and I won't bother pulling up the lines for that, but that, you can find that in John Gardner's book. And one of the details he was discussing was making the rabbit. So the rabbit is basically, um, if you have the stem of a boat, and, and, and the Peapod has got a rounded stem. If you have a stem of a boat and a keel, the rabbit is this notch that the planking fits into. And he was discussing or pondering the best way to shape that rabbit. And he was trying to get it in, get in there with a little triangular file and, and uh, cut it. So I thought I would show the way that I would attempt that. So if we just quickly draw a rabbit here, I'll just use my French curve to sort of fake one in. So, so pretend that this is what the rabbit looks like and it's they're usually this is going to be pretty small because of the uh I'm trying to make it a little bit realistic to model building so it, a rabbit will sometimes be laid out looking something like this so we'll just pretend that this is a there's a stem shape here and this is just the the lines that represent the rabbit itself i would usually start by incising the back rabbit now you could use a knife for doing that of course But if I were doing the real thing, I would be using a chisel. And so if I use a little tiny chisel here, if you incise that rabbit, that back rabbit, sorry, the back rabbit is sort of the inside line. Sometimes it's called the apex line. So we'll just incise that with a tiny little chisel here. And this chisel is just made out of a needle file ground down at the very tip. like so. And then what you would do is you would come in, I come in at sort of like a 45 degree angle and just start starting at like the rabbit line or the bearding line and just chopping down towards that incised back rabbit line. Just taking little stabs and that's just breaking out little pieces. And I can come in there and just notch those out. So there's one side and it's not, doesn't look very neat, but that's the basics of it. When you start doing your rabbit, it's not very neat to start with. You clean it up as you go. And we would come back at it from the other side again, turn that chisel up on edge and stab down. And I'm aiming for that back rabbit line. I'm aiming for the corner of the chisel to hit that back rabbit line. And we know it's not the full depth yet. This is, you're going to be making it a bit shallow to start with. And then I would just nibble that, those little pieces out again, with the chisel laid flat. And there we get this nice little V shape when we're done. Now, if this chisel was the thickness of my planking, and this is, you would usually use what we call a planking fid, which is like a little piece of material that represents the same thickness of your planking. You would want to lay that on there and you keep digging down, keeping that, trying to keep that back rabbit in the same location. 
until it's deep enough so that the front edge of your chisel meets that rabbit line and the back edge of your chisel rides, rests on the bearding line. Now that's fairly, ex this, this chisel I have here is pretty uh, thick given the depth of this rabbit as drawn. But we would just keep working that down. until it's sort of, we can get it to hit that line. So there's still a little ways to go. And this would be a very steep bit of planking here. Very bluff bow on this boat if it was this actual shape. Chop it right to the end here. And now if you needed to do a little more additional fitting, now you might wanna smooth that out and you could try using a scraper for doing this. I mean, um, in the stem, we would pretty much make this all chisel work, but you could try cleaning that up with a scraper if you want. Or you could even make one out of a hack hacksaw blade. So I've just ground the edges down and then rolled a burr onto the end here. I've kind of messed that up with my first scraping job, but it gives you the idea. So my point being is that uh, even at a model scale, sometimes it's easier to approach something with in the same manner that you would a full size boat. So when I'm doing the models, I, I'm often pulling out the, you know, these tiny little tools for doing my model making because it, it just works that way. <laughs> it works really well. It's easier to do it with tools that are scaled down than it is to try and use big chunky tools to do it. And you can imagine if you do I have a triangular file here. Yeah, well, I have something. It's been turned into a into another chisel. But you can imagine even if you had a triangular file, try, trying to file this in, not very easy and not accurate at all. And if the goal of the model making is to mimic the full size building for the purposes of education, well, then you want to try and do it the same way in full size. Now, let me switch to a different lens on the camera. We'll get in closer and do that again. So you can see this little needle file chisel I made here. Very simple, very effective. So we've got our three lines. We've got our bearding line. That's where the planking, the inside face of the planking hits the face of the stem. We have the back rabbit, and that's where the inside corner of the planking meets the back of the rabbit notch. Then we have the rabbit itself, which is where the outside corner of the planking meets the face of the stem. So along the back rabbit, we incise. And we don't worry about going super deep. We're not trying to go full depth right away. We don't know what the full depth is really. Or we, we, you can figure it out, but it's, it's just not worth trying to figure out. Now the reason I have these lines getting wider here is because as you come down towards the forefoot of a stem, usually that planking is uh, is getting tighter, narrower, it's a smaller V. And so more of it presses up against the face of the stem and that's why it's a changing angle. And that's also why you, you can't really use a, a router with a V-shaped end to just sort of chop a, a notch in there and have it be accurate. You can rough it in, but you can't get it all the way there. So now we come in here at an angle, touching the bearding line in this case. And we just take little nibbles. Just kind of aiming for the, what I think might be the bottom of that incise. And my grain is starting to change direction here. So it's acting a little funny here as I come around this curve. 
okay and then we can just nibble out the waste See how where the light hits that? Now, of course, it's not a refined shape yet. Now we would turn it around. And we would do the same thing. Now, if this is a full-size stem, a real boat, this, and doing, doing this the exact same way. course you want to try and preserve your lines. My first little stab at it I went gobbled the lines up. So in a perfect world you hold back from just a hair. <sighs> By doing this going across grain like this the, the, the direction of the grain doesn't influence you as much. If you're to try and take a chisel and just start chopping along the grain the direction of the grain is going to affect how easily you can um, drive that chisel in any particular direction. But going across grain, it sort of it eliminates that influence. So with that nibbled out, let me see if I got a piece of material we can pretend is the planking. Okay, so if this is our planking stock, we want this not so thick. Actually, you know what? Let me show you something. Here's something I do for model making all the time is I use a, a uh, marking gauge with a, with a blade on it, a cutting gauge, in order to split small pieces off. So just flip it over. This is really hard to do down here where the camera can see it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so if this is our planking stock, what we would be doing is we would be feeding this down here and adjusting the depth of that back rabbit until this touches my rabbit line. We'd be, we'd be adjusting both angles, so. Cleaning that up a little bit more. And how you find these rabbit lines and back rabbit and all that, that's part of the lofting process. I flip that over. I think I got to come a little more steep, if I recall there. Okay, you can almost guess the angle because this is always going to be 90 degrees in here because the edge of your planking is 90 degrees. So if the bearding line is further away from the rabbit line, you know that it's gonna be shallower and the rabbit to back rabbit is gonna be steeper. It's gonna have a much steeper attitude in here. And vice versa, the closer those lines come together consistently, the closer it's gonna to be to, you know, a 45 degree angle coming off of each, of, off the face of the material in both directions. If that's planking coming in, that's getting to be just about right. Of course, you gotta keep cleaning it up here. I wonder if our scraper can work well here. This is softwood, which doesn't scrape all that well. And if you're model making, by the way, working in harder woods tends to be a bit easier just because it's finer details. So maple, for instance, is a good model making wood. Maple, boxwood, ebony, anything really fine. So now I've gone a little too deep. If this was the real boat, I'd be in trouble. I'd have to do something something remedial to fix that. So up here, 
it's coming in at closer to a, a, there, these lines are closer to being even. And so this is coming in at more of a 45 degree angle. Anyhow, so that, that gives you the sort of idea. Um, chopping a rabbit, both in model form and full size form. That's sort of the, the basic process, but also just working, working models in the same manner you would work a full size boat as much as you can. Of course, you have to make some allowances, but it can often work really nicely to try to try and use the exact same mentality. And of course, when it comes to building the full size boat, you've gone through this process already on a scale that is you know non consequential financially or for your time. You know it doesn't take long to work that in. Okay, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting me on Patreon. And if you can help us out on Patreon, I really appreciate that too. Link in the corner down in the description. All right, until next time, we'll see you later.